Is our health care system failing women? All four of our panelists think so. I'm Leah Haynes, and on this edition of The Haynes Report, we will explore Canada's health care system and why many experts feel that it's failing the needs of women. With us today are Dr. Carolyn DeMarco, the author of Taking Charge of Your Body, A Woman's Guide to uh, Health, Dr. Carolyn Dean, the author of When You Can't Reach the Doctor, Zelda Abramson, on, uh, an independent women's health consultant, and Lorraine Wegman, a human resources consultant and a director on the Ontario College of Naturopathic Medicine. Uh, Carolyn, I, we've got a minute or so for, for you to sort of give us your platform. Right. I'd like to come from another direction. What I'd like to talk about is the underlying hidden ground that I see as the problem in health care. It could be an effect of the electric environment. When people are watching on TV, they're watching an image that they have to make up from the little dots that come. That means we are constantly making, we're participating. Therefore, we want to participate in our health care and in everything. When you go to a doctor, you want a dialogue. You don't want to be told what to do or given a diagnosis. When a doctor gives a diagnosis, that, that's their job. I think the dialogue that people are looking for and the, the fact that the doctors aren't able, either because they just want to diagnose and, and have their job done, I think um, Partly there's the, the Medicare reasons in here too why doctors don't have time to spend with people. They're constrained by the fact that they have to give a disease code or a diagnosis with each, each prescription that they, uh, or each appointment they have with the patient. And that means you can't go in for a wellness check or to stay well. And then the participation, This, as I talked about, people want to be participatory. That means women get out to work, they get out to do this, that, and the next thing. And they're doing so much that I think they're burning themselves out. Women are, are working 77 hours a day at work and at home. And then I, I want a to uh, ask you about that. It's a, a, a week, perhaps. It yeah. seems like a day. <laughs> <laughs> but what about the feeling that women have when they start, when they go in and start talking about some of these problems? I'm tired all the time. I, I feel depressed. When you start talking about those things, then people label you as hypochondriac, or you're just a complainer, or you know. If your forbid, symptoms the are of a mental, emotional nature, then you're identified as psychiatry. When doctors uh, uh, see patients, they bracket them into specialties and labels. So you're sent off to a psychiatrist or you're labeled. However, the, the conditions that are affecting women these days and people in general are candidiasis, Epstein-Barr. I'd really like, Carolyn, for you to just explain a little bit about candidiasis because I don't think very many of, mm -hmm. who, who here knows what candidiasis is? No? We have a couple. I'm on the board of the Candida Research and Information Foundation. It's in the phone book. No, that's number one. <laughs> Cand Candida is an organism that lives in everybody, but under the influence of antibiotics which kill off all good bacteria and bad bacteria, yeast will overgrow, causing numerous side effects from their toxins or just from their local growth. And in our society, we've never before had such a refined diet, so many antibiotics, so much birth control. This yeast is overgrowing. It'll take research is 15 this not, years. But is this not what people are starting to look at when they talk about PMS for women? Is it not one of the areas It's a that pivot. It's a pivotal area. The environment is bad. The diet is bad. The intestinal flora is bad. You get candida. You allow parasites. You get chronic infections. You work too hard. You get too tired. Yeah. You become more susceptible to and all. And candida is pivotal because it's in us already. So it's right there to take over when we're out of balance. We're coming to you from Toronto Convention Centre and we're talking about women's health care. Now, Carolyn, I said I would come back to you and you really do usher in all of our commercials so far <laughs> to talk about looking for the right doctor, how to do it and where to find your book. Well, I liked what you left off with about women and their intuition. It's true. 
women used to be the, the caregivers, the, the witches in our society, giving out the herbs and doling out the medicines and taking care. And somehow we've turned it all around so that now we run to a doctor and say, well, should I breastfeed and, and should I put this poultice on myself and should I take a vitamin? Whereas if you know these things work, then you use them. I wrote my book, which has about 40, 50 conditions in, in it, described and what you do for them, nutritionally, herbally, homeopathically. And I've cut my office visits down by about a half because people take care of themselves at home. It really we, is all about prevention, yeah, isn't it? We, we can become a system that, that deals with disease rather than dealing with preventing the disease. But first, let's have a question. I have a question for all of the panelists. Something that concerns me is that something that has a direct effect on our health is our diet. And from what I understand, doctors in their medical program do not have a great emphasis placed on diet. And it would strike me that if someone was getting run down, weren't feeling well, that would be the first thing that I would look at. And I wondered what you think of in terms of the kind of health care we receive with respect to how we use diet and take care of ourselves. Go ahead, Carolyn. I tend first. to think that we didn't learn about it in med school that's that's true i think doctors think it's a very diet is too simple it's like you know you eat every day and they haven't realized that we've gone into junk foods into fast foods we can spend days away from our kitchen and be eating things that we think are good for us but which are are full of additives pesticides antibiotics are in the meat if you don't take antibiotics as a pill you can still take it in your meat and i do think it's crucial but it's just been pushed aside because it seems so simple and again it's women's work and it also can get kind of depressing when you start thinking about, uh, I guess it was about eight or nine years ago for me that I started looking at labels and deciding, I, my doctor had a sign in the office that said, if you can't read it, don't eat it. And I started <laughs> reading labels and thinking, this is so true. There are so many things in, in our food mm -hmm. that we have no idea of. Yes. There's, <laughs> there's so many health uh, foods on the market uh, at this day. How do we, are they, um, can they help us or is it just a marketing ploy or what? That's a good point because uh, health food stars are, stores are in it for the money too. However, read their labels. And exactly. And, and containers. Yeah. I think if you go to a health, food, uh, a health food store and you find things that are packaged in environmentally unsound packaging, mm -hmm. you should question mm -hmm. how genuine the approach is because someone who's really involved in this especially from a product standpoint I would think would be as concerned about the wellness of the planet the wellness of our but what you can do is uh, as Lorraine mentioned diet exercise and rest we can't control the environment although we should be speaking out about it the things we can control control them well eat as much raw food as you can avoid sugar tea, coffee, and alcohol, and you avoid the, the anti-nutrients, and think positively. Bless your food. I think that with diet, people should keep it simple. I, um, I always start people off wherever they are. Avoid sugar, avoid red meat, and, and then avoid dairy. I think the dairy industry, dairy has been way over-promoted. Um, yes, Caroline, you mentioned candida. How can you check as a woman for, is there signs, or does a pap smear tell you if you have that? The uh, commonly women have a candida vaginitis. Uh, when it's treated locally, it tends not to clear. It may be further into the intestines. Swabs don't always test for it. I do a blood test for it, but uh, that's something that uh, this program is not about. But we can talk later. I'm going to interrupt again. Carolyn, you've ushered in another commercial. <laughs> don't go away. We're talking about health care. We'll be right back after this. I mentioned before that as women our lives are much busier and we're a convenience focused society but when it comes to eating instead of grabbing a raw vegetable it's so much easier to grab a junk food and I'm just wondering what your comments are on that. Well I'll talk about a patient who came to me today uh, with bowel cancer and she said I have been eating poorly for 10 years and I knew it and I 
started to take a lot of vitamins and minerals 10 years ago because I thought that would help. She said, if someone would, would have looked me in the eye 10 years ago and said, your diet could cause cancer, I would have changed. And maybe that's what we have to do to people. Karen